Welcome back guys. In today's video, I have something rather special for you. We will be looking at a pinnacle of Intel's first gen high end desktop processors, the one and only Intel Cry 7 990X. Released in 2011 and at the time, it was the fastest and most advanced CPU available for consumers on the X58 chipset. This timeless masterpiece was of course rather expensive at around 1000 USD, but it featured 6 hyper-threaded cores for a total of 12 threads, a fully unlocked multiplier and 12 MB of L3 cache. I think it's rather safe to say, this very expensive and power-hungry chip was only intended for the most hardcore of gamers or content creators. At stock, it runs at 3.46 GHz with a maximum turbo clock speed of 3.73 GHz. Rest assured, I will push this bad boy above and beyond to squeeze as much performance as possible. There really isn't that much content on YouTube that covers this CPU from way back then, but here's a clip I found of it being overclocked to 7.1 GHz using LN2. Yes, you heard that right. I bought it a few weeks ago bundled with the iconic LGA1366 CPU cooler, which I'm sure most of you recognize, a lovely accompanying Intel DX58 Smackover 2 motherboard and some Corsair Vengeance DDR3 memory for around £110 or about £135 USD. Good deal? Tell me about it in the comments down below. Few short moments later, the 990X sits on the test bench and as ever, I'm using the proven Corsair's AX860i power supply, 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler to keep the temps in check and the monstrous Aorus RTX 3080 to generate the CPU bottleneck. Being open air, there are of course two 140mm fans delivering airflow to where it's needed. I will be using 12GB of CL9 DDR3 memory running at 16MHz, the latest 21H2 Windows 10 Pro and Nvidia drivers of version 531.41. This Intel desktop board comes with tons of useful overclocking features such as the BIOS reset switch, a debug and diagnostic LED panels and overclocking with it was rather easy. The only downside was the incorrect frequency that was reporting in Afterburner and also no power usage metrics. Ready? Let's get into it. Straight away, I updated BIOS to the latest available version which involved use of the Internet Archive since Intel discontinued support years ago, but from now on it was easy sailing as the menus are intuitive. The actual overclock is achieved by increasing processor's fully unlocked multiplier and sky's the limit here. After a few hours of testing, I finally settled on a 4.53 GHz oil core overclock. This required touch over 1.5 volts dialed in to remain stable throughout my testing. However, I was able to boot and use the system running at nearly 5 GHz, at which point the thermals became a major issue and I had to dial it back to safety. Stock TDP of 130 watts was quickly more than doubled. These chips can't be hungry, more so if pushed right to the extreme. Let's test. Productivity starts with Cinebench R23, which puts a good amount of strain on any CPU. The 990X did quite well considering its age. At stock speeds, single thread score was 543 points and multi score of 4069 points. Nice. When overclocked, Scores jumped by 22% to 658 and just over 5000. This means the gains are following overclock increase and there are no diminishing returns, we are off to a good start here. 7 zip benchmark follows similar results with more dramatic increase with the decompression test. Not bad for a decade old chip, hey? Please do me a favour and pinch your results in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to testing the P55 chipset with some of the lower end first gen i7s and other processors soon. It would be really interesting to see how the 990X compares. Testing rendering using Blender's car demo revealed just how much quicker modern CPUs are. Well, that is if you consider my Ryzen 9 3900X a modern CPU. The 990X took nearly 10 minutes to complete the render at stock speed, however, a 18% time decrease with overclock was great to see. Using the fast 1080p30 preset on one of my 10GB video file in Handbrake took the old champ nearly 33 minutes to complete. But when overclocked, time was reduced by 22%. I think this all was interesting to see and up next, let's run some game benchmarks. 
All game testing was done at 1080p to avoid GPU bottleneck and I'd like to keep it consistent so I'm using the built-in benchmarks where possible. We start off with F1 2018 and I've selected Japan circuit and used the ultra high preset. The overall CPU usage was around 35%. At stock speeds 990X pushed 123 FPS on average. When overclocked, there was a nice, but not as impressive, 7% increase to 132 FPS. Compared to the CPU that's fitted onto my test bench, the i9-10900X, the old beast is slower by 89%. I am of course looking forward to adding more CPUs along and seeing how they compare. Deus Ex Mankind was utilizing the 990X significantly more than F1 2018, with an average use of around 40%. With very high preset, game run at 64 FPS average at stock speeds and a mild 8% increase to nearly 70 when overclocked. 10900X faster by 86% in this title. Next up, Dirt Rally. 990X was not hard at work, with much lower overload utilization than previous two games. Ultra preset with 2 times MSAA resulted in 106.9 FPS on average when running stock, nice, but then almost 17% faster when overclocked. Then 900X keeping a 50% lead. Forza Horizon 4 with Ultra preset so around 40% CPU utilization. 990X pushed 94.5 FPS on average at stop speeds and overclocking resulted in a typical 8% increase. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 990X finally saw a proper utilization across all cores of around 85%. The highest preset ran at 96 FPS on average, overclocking pushed only extra 5% and up to 101 FPS. 10900X bossing and faster by around 76%. Can't be missing from any CPU testing, Rainbow Six Siege continues the great 990X utilization to around 65%. With very high preset, I saw 191 FPS on average at stock speeds and a 8% increase when overclocked. The 10900X flexes and is faster by 114%. Far Cry 6, one of the newer games tested today, used the 990X to around 50% on average. Using Ultra preset, I saw 52 FPS on average at stock, and no surprises here with the typical 8% increase when overclocked. 10900X leading by 82%. And the last game tested was Cyberpunk 2077, where we jumped back to high CPU utilization of around 75%. Using a high preset, the stock 990X managed to deliver nearly 73 FPS on average, with a nice 9% increase when overclocked. The 10900X was around 80% faster. Alright, time to wrap up and seriously, this thing deserves some props. Considering it's released more than a decade ago, back when the Nintendo 3DS and iPhone 4 were the hottest gadgets around. Feeling old yet? But as they say, credit where it's due. It overclocks like a champ and does not mind being pushed. Keep in mind, anything past 4.5GHz was a diminishing return for me. The CPU itself felt more than enough for most games and I dare I say even some productivity. However, the X58 platform itself is really starting to be a huge bottleneck. CPUs have progressed by leaps and bounds since, all for the better. There can only be one king, and the i7-990X is just that. It deserves a place on the shelf or a trophy cabinet if you like, just not running inside of your PC. High-end X58 money buys you a mid-range, second-gen Ryzen platform which is going to run circles around it. Forget it. I buy this stuff, so you don't have to, and you're welcome. Despite all of the inefficiencies, I really enjoyed testing this CPU. I can only imagine how baller you must have felt back in the day with this bad boy. Smash the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below if you ever owned an Intel Extreme CPU, and I hope to see you all in the next one.